and welcome back to On The Sofa with me, Hayley. Now, we have got a really exciting guest for you. Now, unfortunately, he couldn't come into the studio due to the circumstances. However, we did manage to get him on Skype just for you. Uh, now, I'll give you a little clue. He was in the film Coyote Ugly. Uh, he also played John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever in the West End and also Fierro in Wicked. Oh yes, it's Adam Garcia. Adam, thank you so much. It's so good to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, now I think most of us remember you from Coyote Ugly. Uh, for me, it's just one of those go-to films when I'm having a bad day, like today under these circumstances. Um, I just love the film. And what I wanna know is that scene when you're on the bar, did you just kind of like improvise that or was it choreographed? <laughs> it was choreographed. Oh, was it? <clears throat> yeah, no, we choreographed it, yeah. Because um, that's the magic of movies is they right. have to know all the lighting guys, the camera guys, the director, yeah. they all need to know where you're going to be going so you can capture it. So the choreographer uh, and I uh, put it together in about a day. It didn't take that Wow. Long. Yeah. Um, and then, and it wasn't originally in the script. There was sort of something there to do with her, like selling me off. <laughs> but um, but there was never sort of a routine per se. Um, yeah. But obviously, Jerry Bruckheimer and the director David McNally knew that I was a dancer, so yeah, absolutely. They were like, "Go on, then." God. <laughs> go exploit your talents. So yeah, it really came in handy. And uh, yeah, as I said, it wasn't in the wasn't in the original script that he could, wow. you know, would be willing to move. But he was, you know, it wasn't. It's not a like a super dancer's dance. It's like yeah. some guy who's willing to get up there and move like. But Kevin. I have seen you in tap dogs, and um, I used to go tap dancing, Adam. Grade four, I think I got up to, but nothing like I know nothing like pullbacks. you doing tap dogs. Um, I mean, I do go around Tesco's. Still tap dancing today, uh, but you guys it's, it's are so their fault in sync. Playing music. Do they play music in Tesco's? No, they don't play music in Tesco's. <laughs> I know, but I've still got the habit of doing like my time steps and my wings. <laughs> That's a good habit. Hey, look, you learned something. <laughs> but yeah, you guys in tap dogs. I just feel like if one of you went out of sync, it would go completely off. Was it really hard to stick together? Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, and that was part of the. Uh, the, the whole sort of choreography, Dean Perry, who choreographed it. Yeah. A lot of the, a lot of it wasn't in 4-4, four, four, as in the time signature, one, two, three, four. Yeah. A lot of it was like seven, eight, five, eight, five, twelve. Oh, it's you know, me a headache already, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. 21 counts every 21, you know. Yeah. So there was lots of different um, time signatures and they would change. But all, obviously in sync, there was also a lot of a cappella stuff. So, yeah. uh, and that was up to, I played the foreman uh, and the foreman's job is to drive the tempo and keep the, the metronome going. So it was my sort of job to pull everyone in line. And Right. It's going to be a hard sport, hasn't it? It's, it's, it's pretty hard work. People think, oh, dancing, you know, but it's like playing rugby or something, isn't it? It was an, it was an 85 minute sprint. Wow. God. Pretty much from, I mean, the foreman actually got more breaks than the, anyone else, but Yeah. I think we were eating, I think we were blowing out sort of three and a half thousand calories per show. Wow. So Amazing. we could eat whatever we wanted. Yeah, that sounds like the dream. Although I'm doing that right now under the circumstances. Yeah, so the yeah, diet's yeah. gone out the window. <laughs> um, but let's talk about Saturday Night Fever. Because for me, um, I, again, I did see that. And I just thought you completely pulled it off. But I heard that um, you had to audition quite a few times for the role. Is that right? I think it was about, I want to say between eight and 10. What? Yeah. So, I mean, look, any, any sort of musical, you audition a lot anyway, because you go through the first round, then you got the yes. singing round, then you got the dancing round, then you got the callbacks and you got the producer mm. and the director's rounds. And it can like, it can take a lot, but I think I was, and they were trying to find, you know, the right person. Arlene Phillips thought I was the right person. Yeah, because didn't she choreograph you in Greece? So she, yeah. yeah, choreographed me in Greece and she was the director of this. And I think some of the other producers were like, he's too young, he's an unknown. I'd done two other shows. Because this was before 
coyote, wasn't it? And this is before coyote yeah. the ugly. So I'd, I'd arrived and I'd, I'd done a show called Hot Shoe Shuffle with Dean Perry. Oh, yes, I remember that. Then I did Grease as Duty, not the lead role. Um, and they were like, it's a lead role and it's, you know, Tony Monero, it's taking after Travolta. We need a name, you know, like school people want to do yeah. because they need bums on seats. But, um, the, you know, Arlene Phillips and, and Robert Stigwood were really adamant that I do it. And they won the other producers over, even though, like, I'm, I know some of them were like, well, his voice isn't great and all that sort of stuff. But I worked really hard on that. And uh, and I knew, I, kind of, I, knew, I knew that I could do it for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. You're like I knew smart. I could do that. I really felt that role. Like, when I auditioned for it, I was like, I know. I know this person. This is. Yeah. Yeah. It felt right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it worked. Yeah. Well, obviously, um, you know, you're a singer, actor and primarily a dancer, but you were also a judge on Got To Dance. Yes. How was that for you? I loved it. I thought yeah. it was one of the best sort of career opportunities I'd had. And I wasn't expecting it to do what it did. And it sort of really got me involved. I hadn't done a musical I hadn't danced since 2006. Oh, right. In Wicked. Oh, yes. I think I've got Dancing, on Life, Dancing Through Life on uh, my podcast at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and even, even that, I wasn't dancing that much in it. And I think no, I also really. went and did Chip in On the Town yeah. in like a three month gig in Paris, which also isn't a huge dance role. It's a singing role yeah. and an acting role. So I hadn't done any sort of dancing and I was got called in for the audition and I just watched Diversity win and so I was new I was aware of who Ashley Banjo was and I obviously yeah. knew who Kimberly Wyatt was and um knew who Davina McCall was and they sort of pulled us all together and they told us about the show and we were like yeah I mean yeah I mean it sounds like a great show for dancers and it sort of evolved into a show that really represented the dance community in Britain or in the Europe, UK and Ireland yeah. And uh, and that was really special. We thought it was, you know, just it could have just been another talent show, but it really was, you know, the best dancers one each yeah. time got through. Uh, and yeah. it just showed me how, how 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 big and how strong dancing is in the UK and Ireland, and also yeah. that the average viewer of the show knew exactly what they were watching and how good it was. Yeah. Because yeah. we didn't we didn't pick the winners, and every year they were like, they're the best, and we were like, yeah, they are, yeah. I mean, a lot of the people that go on uh, the program are more sort of street. Do you think there should be more sort of like tap dancers? We should be like promoting that more. Well, I mean, it's the, look, it's things come come and go, and and street's been around for twenty no forty years yeah. since the eighties. So it's you know it's a pretty established thing, and it's got so many different. Um, branches to its sort of tree uh, and people love it and a lot of boys uh, want to do it because it's yeah. so physical and athletic and it's got a gymnastics in it yeah. it's also what's predominantly with popular music and hip hop and R&B it's what people look at whereas tap dancing is still very popular because I teach all around the country and yeah. lots of people do it but it isn't so much like it, it had its heyday really when the, the 50s musicals, yeah, 40s, 50s, 60s, oh, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, let's say that, mm. um, where, where popular music was big band, bandstand. Yeah. And it makes sense to tap dance to those sort of things. Jazz. Yeah. You can, I mean, I love dancing to hip hop and R&B and all that sort of stuff. So maybe there'll be a, it'll turn around but um yeah absolutely because when you started out um i think you started like about seven or eight didn't you i did and yeah was that quite a hard time for you because i can remember in my dance classes we only had kind of like one guy whereas now um it's just so many more i think that's fantastic uh yeah i think it's a lot more acceptable for guys to do it yeah i think um although i, I know kids who still get teased but um you know, boys who still get teased, but <clears throat> I think because we see so much on on yeah. music videos and online, and you know, pe males dancing all the time, it's sort of not so uncommon anymore. 
That's yeah. a little bit more acceptable. Yeah. Weirdly enough, in Australia, I never got teased. Like mm. maybe like once or twice. Which is brilliant. I love that. So I, I've done I that. like that, yes. Yeah. Really, everyone should dance. <laughs> um, well, I've got a question from uh, one of our viewers, um, Adam. Um, <laughs> you okay? Uh, she wants to know if you could uh, recreate any great dance moment, what would it be? Um, this is from Andrea, and she's hoping you'll say uh, Gene Kelly. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to. I've done Gene Kelly a couple of times. Yeah. I'd still like to do more. Because you know, it, it, he's it's very difficult. <laughs> he's really good. I think I'd really actually like to. I'd love to do Gene, but I think. I mean, if I could do the Nicholas Brothers routines, like Stormy yeah. Weather and yeah. Down Argentine Way. If I mean, if I had the flexibility and the the sheer unbelievable talent, yeah. I think I'd like to do that. But I don't think I can do the half splits. We're we'll holding to that. Then. Jumping over someone. I'd, I'd, um, and Fred. <laughs> I mean, some of Fred's tap routines are just staggeringly good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to go and do a little bit of uh, time steps in my dining room under the circumstances. But um, thank you so much uh, for joining us, Adam. We really appreciate it. And um, good luck with everything. Thank you very much, Fred. Thank you so much. Bye. Oh, we've now come to the end of On the Sofa with Hayley. Thank you so much for tuning in and I really do appreciate all your support. In fact, I would love to hear from you. Details are on the screen below. Let's see what guests we can get for next time and uh, do keep me posted on what you think of the show. Now, I wanna say a big thank you to my guests, uh, Terry Dwyer, Molly Hocking, Kim Mazel, and of course, Adam Garcia. I'm Hayley Palmer and I will definitely see you next time. Stay safe.